In this tutorial, you'll learn the basics of how to use Acker Dialogs. It's very simple. The tool is composed of three panels and a status and button bar. The left panel is the Elements panel. This is a library of dialog elements that can be dragged and dropped onto the design. The center panel is the design area where the dialog design is built. You can resize this area with the gripper on the bottom. This is the only panel that can be resized. The right panel is the Properties panel where the properties for a selected element are listed and edited. And finally, there is a status and button bar on the bottom. In the design area, the bounded gray box with the blue title bar is the dialog. The design shown here is the default minimum dialog you get when the tool is first used. This is also the dialog design generated by the new button. As the cursor moves over the dialog design, a couple of things happen. First, coordinates are displayed on the status bar. These coordinates are to help you in sizing the various elements. Next, when the cursor passes over a dialog element, that element is highlighted with a yellow rectangle. And when you click on the mouse, the highlighted element is selected and the properties for that element are displayed in the properties panel. To create a new dialog design, simply drag an element from the palette and drop it onto the design. The new element is automatically selected and its properties are displayed in the Properties panel. Notice that the Save button became enabled and turned red when the element was added. The Save button is enabled whenever any changes are made to the design so that you know that it needs to be saved, which I'll do right now. Notice that the Save button is now disabled to indicate that no changes have been made to the design. To change a property, for example the height, click in the value box and type in a new value. When I hit the Enter key, the design element is automatically resized. Notice the Save button turned red because I just made a design change. To remove a value, click on the red X. And again, the design element is automatically resized. Note also that the selection rectangle has resized grippers on the corners and the sides. When the cursor passes over the gripper, it changes to indicate the type of resizing that gripper will produce and dragged but note that when I resize the element, that the new width and height are reflected in the Properties panel. When the cursor is inside the selection rectangle, it changes to a Move cursor. And now when I click and drag, an insertion bar is shown at the new insertion point. When I lift up on the mouse, that element is dropped into the new location. Now, let's take a closer look at how selection works. Clicking on an element toggles the selection. Click on it once. The element becomes selected. Click on it a second time, the element is deselected. Note that the delete button is disabled when there's no selection and enabled when there is a selection. And of course, clicking on the delete button removes the element. Now I didn't want to do that, so I'll click on reload to reload the element. Note that it reloaded from the last save, which is when I first added that element. I lost the sizing that I had applied it later on. When I select on an element and then select on another element, the first element is deselected so I can only select one element at a time unless I'm pressing on the control key. In that case, whenever I click on a new element, that element is selected and the old element remains selected. Clicking on an element the second time while holding the control key deselects only that element, not the other elements. Note that when I made multiple selections, the Properties panel changes to display only those properties that are common between the two elements. When I have two elements selected, a change in a property value changes it for both elements. With all the changes that you'll be making to a design, it's a good idea to press on the Save button every few minutes to make sure that the latest design is always saved. The design is saved to your pdfscripting.com account, so whenever you log back into the site, that design is reloaded, and you can only save one design at a time. And of course, you can always reload the design by clicking on the Reload button. At some point, you'll want to acquire the dialog JavaScript code for testing or for integrating the dialog into a script. To do this, click on the Make Dialog JavaScript button. This action displays the dialog code in a pop-up window where you can inspect the code and copy to the clipboard with the Copy to Clipboard button. Next, I'll open up Acrobat and the Acrobat console window. Then I'll paste the code into the window. Before we run the code, let's take a look at how it's structured. 
In this case, the code starts out with the dialog object definition. If the dialog included an image or list element, then the code would have started with the initialization data for those elements. Let's skip over the dialog definition and go to the bottom of the code. This last bit is an example for how to use the code within your own script. It reads, if the OK button was pressed, then print out the value entered in to the text box, that is, the text box that's on the dialog. I'll cover this code in more detail in later tutorials. To run the code, you select all of it, and then press Control Enter. And there is the dialog. I'll enter some text into the text entry box, and then click on the OK button which exits the dialog and displays the value in the console window that I just entered into the entry box. And that covers the basics for using Acro Dialogs to create a dialog design. In the next video, we'll cover the different element types, their properties, and some tips on how to do proper dialog layout.